I told you when I came to this university on 87, it was at the beginning of the problem between Caltech and the Utah and all those people, but myself, because of my training, which was uh, really the physical organic and solar energy that I was very interested, when I read all those things and went through those things, I thought at that time, this is real. And then I had the opportunity to work with Mel. Little by little, I said, when I saw that really he believes, and he's a very important scientist, at least in my opinion, I said, Mel, I have another thing, because I have been working in another project doing novel chemistry. Inside the zeolite cavity is a nanoparticles as the chemistry is completely different. You have electric field, everything changes. Can you describe what is a zeolite? Okay, zeolite for 100 years was used for softening the water. It means if the water is hard, they were using this. this is a, now it is natural and synthetic one. Generally, the, the natural one or the synthetic one has been used many, many years for softening the water. Mm -hmm. But in the last 15 years, 20 years, there's a new thing because the chemistry of supramolecule, it means if you have a big, big uh, combination of the atoms and everything in a crystalline form, in chemistry, normal chemistry, and they got Nobel Prize two, three years ago, not for uh, this work, but for chemistry in supramolecule. So what does it mean? Zeolite is a crystal. It means uh, aluminosilicate. It means okay. the technical aluminosilicate. It has some pores. It has some cavity, super cage. Mm. But all is really a lot of paper, specifically for chemistry. It's a lot of electric field. What we do we put palladium in. Pour. These zeolites have a fixed pore that only certain things fit in. For example, when you want to purify water, maybe sodium ions will go in, right? It is exchange. Yeah, exchange. You yeah, exchange. Yeah, exchange. Exactly. So mm -hmm. it's very only certain sizes that you get them in different sizes, but you can you can specify what things can fit in and what things can't go in. And the first time wow. I heard about zeolites, I was working in chemistry, and okay. they want to get rid of water. They put a special zeolite in it that, where the water could fit in the cavities and nothing else. And so the water would wind up in the zeolite cavities and the, the organic solvent would be pure of water, be free of water. Hmm. Because water would go into the pores and the organic hmm. solvents would not. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one use of, a, use of zeolites that have been around a long time. Hmm. But the zeolites were first natural in nature, but then scientists learned how to make them to fit certain patterns. But, but they naturally exist out in nature if you knew how to identify it. I started with one student, very simple, to see if we see something and we saw. I said, wow. Hmm. After some times, I started to do again the same thing because I was involved in fuel cell and I had all the electronic to measure everything that nobody can say your measurement is not. It's all lab view, software, everything, compensation of all of the things. We did that. Each time that I did that, I saw excess heat with deuterium, but not hydrogen. Of course, Mel was involved, said Mel, each time that I do this experiment is a nanoparticle. Well, still I see heat. And I know that inside the cavity it is an electric field. I said, Mel, there's only, I believe there's two factors. One of them is electric field and one of them is nanoparticles. The a small reactor, this is the bigger reactor. This is the big was, one. Yeah, wow. the, the, the bigger one. Because <laughs> you want to see how much heat. But it's this so was, tiny. This was the reactor right inside. And can you describe what kind of reactor is this? Well, this is stainless steel. Okay, and so what goes So the zeolite in? loaded with palladium goes there. This will be connected like this. Instead of this, you have this. 
you have thermistor right here and the deuterium goes there from this right deuterium comes out but the, another good thing is for example for this or this when deuterium goes we measure the temperature, the room, the temperature inside, the temperature of the gas going in, the temperature of the gas going out. So I measure the temperature of here, temperature inside, temperature of the thing here. For example, if you see this one, it's only a small amount. And then I close this. I close the other one here. So the, I leave it. For, for example, five hours, 10 hours, everything goes to the computer. And then I check the temperature, for example, by lab view. And Six. then we do all the calculation. We will see that really when I close everything, the real temperature is coming out. It means the more heat we have. It means the graph goes right more than anybody else and come. This happens every time. But, but the good thing is, COLD is easy. Nobody can tell me that you made them a wrong uh, calculation. Well, I didn't put any energy. I got energy. Mm -hmm. And you have one of the highest energy densities per unit per, per palladium than anybody has seen. But it's not so hot that is the PVC here. Of course, I had the very good uh, for all of them are wrapped are really for mm -hmm. uh, insulation, nothing goes uh, out, nothing goes in. Mm -hmm. The temperature of the room will be controlled, goes again to computer, compensation. Everything. You know, for man, they say, oh, this happened, that happened. There's nothing. What do you want to do? This <laughs> reactor so small, right? <laughs> and it is right there, completely in insulated. insulated, insulated. Right, yeah. Yeah. So what you want, there's a, no really problem at all, and that's why we, be, we get the bigger one. And because the gas is just diffusing, you're not adding, oh, well, you're adding an electric field, so you are... No, I you, didn't add. Electric field oh, is inside okay. my zeolite. Oh, you know, like, I see. Like it, so you have zero input energy zero for input your energy. cell. See, the electric field is inside, inside. Yeah. just by the atoms that are there, they create an electric field. Mm. The, the value is known as about 0.3 mm. volts per angstrom, but I like to call that 3 billion volts per meter, which is another way to express it. 3 billion <laughs> volts per meter. <laughs> you have to see how big it is. Yeah. Because the angstrom is so small. Wow. Right, yeah. <laughs> Um, have you ever attempted to measure any nuclear particles from your cells? Not yet. Not yet. E except uh, that you've se accidentally you've seen copper and other yeah, elements, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do solid, you can do liquid, you can do uh, gel. Mm -hmm. That's why we wanted to, for some of the palladium that we have, or B203 that he has, we want to put in solid probe. Probe it means the place that you put the chemical. You were going to show me that probe. Do you, do you oh. have it handy or not? Yeah. You want to see it? Because I need to know how big it, the plate the plate of bond. Oh, you want it? Oh, oh let me. Right. This is here. Mm -hmm. If you want to see. Yeah, this going for. So you're looking at a small container that will put one of your electrodes in and then examine it. Yeah, this is, see what's on the surface. Yeah, this is it. This is important. This is the size that you yeah. Oh, okay. You know, the plating I deposit is just a kind of powder I could put it in, right? Plating, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is right now. Right now. But the plating boron is too big to go fit in there. Yeah. So I'd have to cut it. Yeah. Right. That's why. What. what if you cut off the wrong spot? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> then, like you'd have to get, cut the whole get, thing. Get then. the wrong result. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> the chemical is inside. You see yes. that? Yes. It's a solid. For example, if you have a palladium loaded, the zeolite loaded with palladium, it's right there. Put there, and this rotate in the magic angle. No, it has magic angle. 
It means only you need that angle in order to see good, uh, good result. Good result. Yeah, and that one, you rotate 15,000 per second. That thing will rotate? Yeah, it'll spin in, inside it'll spin. the instrument. It'll spin 15,000 times per second. No. Right. <laughs> That is to make it average without the signal, right? By spinning fast. It, yeah, be yeah, the, yeah, to see the uh, peak will be very narrow. narrow. Right. And then when the reaction over, I took the zeolite out. I did the uh, scanning electron microscope and the uh, EDX, it means uh, X-ray fluorescence. And I measure all of the element, I saw that there's a new element is there is copper. You found copper as a transmutation element in your little cell. I don't cell know, there. I saw copper, I don't know transmutation or no, but I okay. saw copper. Okay. But that, 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 there's no other way to explain it, or no easy yeah. way to explain I it. I saw okay. copper and I thought, well, personally I believe you have transmutation as well. Because myself here, with zeolite when I do palladium, with X-ray diffraction, I detect copper as well. Mm -hmm. At that time, two years ago, I said, I see that, but I don't dare to say that. But now, transmutation is important. When you went to the meeting in Washington, D.C., you found other people were reporting similar effects. Yeah. Something new would be showing up that wasn't there originally, like copper or other elements. Uh, so George Miley has talked a lot about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is transmutation. 2008, I had a hard time to say that, except to me. So I saw that. But the palladium that they use doesn't have any copper from where it came. Uh, and and, and the, the uh, zeolite doesn't hmm. have copper. No, right zeolite. Yeah. So copper, uh, but his starting material didn't have any copper. He so I copper. thought perhaps uh, really at that time, uh, really, it is impurity, this, that, but when I saw so many paper came showing that they saw a lot of different transmutations, mm -hmm. now I believe now there's perhaps two paths. One of them is deuterium, deuterium fusion. Another one is another process for transmutation. I believe I didn't see any effect with hydrogen. Mm -hmm. So how this happened, I think electric field, particle size, mm -hmm. some other thing that, of course, oxide, I think it is important because, you know, in 2010, we were in ACS and Mel was there and they were mm -hmm. there. They showed the results and said, mm -hmm. what you are doing is wrong because you use this salt of palladium and salt of palladium doing exchange like water. The heavier atom replaces sodium. So you don't have nanoparticles. Mm -hmm. So what I do is very specific right now. We do organometallic that doesn't have iron. Then you put there, and then you put at high temperature, burn everything so palladium stick and now works. Otherwise, it won't work. Well, how many times did you, have you run the, did you run the experiment? Oh, ten times. Oh, ten times. Ten times. And but, but, but you're one hundred percent. Each time success. that I did that, I see excess heat. Wow. With the same zeolite, but if I change the zeolite, well, it depends how I load it. This is the mm. important. The key is how you load the zeolite. Some people think if the molecule size is a little bit big, it doesn't go in. Mm -hmm. but they don't know the new things. You have oscillation of the mm -hmm. window in zeolite. Zeolite is bizarre, believe me. Mm -hmm. As a scientist, I tell you. It's a book, it's a lot of, not me only, all the world, is doing oscillation, the window, because of the electric field and changing fluctuation, doing like this. So it's possible some molecule which is big goes there when it's open and then close. Mm -hmm. That's why I want to do spectroscopy. I want to do the TEM, transmission electron spectroscopy, to see the size of the particle, the shape of the particle. All those things are extremely important. Because as other work, I see the importance. The mm -hmm. people that said, oh, we made the nanoparticle. What size? What shape? Because if you change those, the chemical reaction changes. Perhaps this changes as well. 
But the problem is you cannot use a salt of a metal, doesn't matter whatever it is, palladium, nickel, and say that I put this inside. Because as soon as you put this, sodium or potassium exchange. It means they goes away and the other one comes. But what I do is different. I use an organopalladium. Organopalladium doesn't have any iron. It's this. Palladium, several other things around this. This goes there. And then at 500 degrees C, I burn it. Everything, carbon, hydrogen, everything is burned. Inside, I have palladium, but at the size, which is about uh, maximum s seven nanometer. You know, mm -hmm. with, with the X-ray diffraction, but, we but see a lot of palladium in. Mm -hmm. But, it, but it's, uh, uh, it's, not, it's not a big clump of palladium. It's just very small, uh, mm -hmm. uh, maybe maybe uh, 10 atoms or 20, we don't know. You know, what's very really surprising, he gets a, heat, a, a measurable heating effect on a very small amount of palladium. So mm -hmm. per, 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 per gram of palladium, he's getting a very big effect. That's why if you calculate, even I don't have 10 to the power minus 5 milligram mm -hmm. of, uh, of palladium. Of palladium. So Again, you, you have this much heat. Now you, you see you if have you have one gram of pal palladium, how much? Because grams. the whole thing for one gram of this, perhaps it was about 20 milligram. We so thought might, that it went there. How might, much washed out? How much went in? You might, you might have megawatts per gram. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. That's why it's so cheap. That's why it's so cheap. That's what I'm telling you. Megawatts per gram. Oh, Maybe. Can't. He knows Maybe. better than me. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. He knows better than me. Yeah. No, In no. any case, we're talking about a very high energy density. If you yes, specifically if you compare with the amount of palladium that you use. Mm -hmm. Like ten to the minus eight grams. That's because it is nanoparticle, nano ten to the power minus nine diameter. You put the thing there. How many of those you can put? I was very, very, really generous. I said 10 to the power of minus 5 milligram, but it's, even it's less. You know, but I didn't measure these things. This is the next thing that we do more scientifically, step by step. You know, myself, I believe electric field, because experience that I have in chemistry is your life. Electric field is extremely important. Electric field, you know, change the wave function, but at the same time, if you have oscillation there, so electric field is fluctuation. Any high electric field affect this reaction. The reason is you don't know when the palladium is there. But excuse me, your palladium nanoparticle is there. You know the size and shape of nanoparticle we know today affect the property. So that by good luck that we have a good zeolite, because zeolite is many different, has this good size and good shape of nanoparticles. And you have electric field. When deuterium comes, it's possible that the property changes. Myself in chemistry, I say the wave function is changes. What does it mean? The, the a molecule that doesn't absorb light Normally, when I put inside the zeolite, it absorbs light at longer wavelengths. Well, are there charges, you know, the oxygen in there have negative charges, and maybe that confines things and changes the reaction. We, we know it changes chemical reactions. Of right? course, right, yeah. yeah. Is it, it might affect nuclear processes. We, we and I have one electron transfer, mm -hmm. so all those things for the neutron, that new theory they said is some low neutron and all those things could be happening. But I believe zeolite approach is good and today Mel said something mm. to me I didn't know say that thing. yeah I was I've been going through a lot of papers thrown out I have so many papers on different things especially this field that I've, I have to throw a lot out of the way I can't store it all but going through things I found uh, notes I took on in a discussion with Martin Fleischmann we were discussing things that would work and wouldn't work and this was clear back in about 1999 and, and zeolites came up. I, I, I didn't. I forgot about this, but I saw my notes, and and Martin said, 
he was judging things by whether it'd be, whether it would work or not. By if it was good, he would say warm or very warm. And when we discussed zeolites, he said very warm. Like he was aware that could be a very good field hmm. for to study. Nobody had done this work yet, but he back in 1999, he was predicting zeolites would be a very important area for this field. But it seems like a reproducible experiment, which is quite... It is reproducible. We did that. Even I told you we did this. I put a uh, glass tube in. It means a, uh, but to do it right, you need to be an expert on zeolites. And he's worked, you've worked on zeolites for years. For years. Right. And uh, I never wanted... To, I didn't know that it's good for cold fusion. I do chemistry <laughs> and nanoscale. Well, can you describe what is next? What are you going to do next? What I want to do, I want to make for deuterium a bigger thing, doing it bigger to see if I can have enough heat that said, okay, there's a lot of heat. It's not, this one is more than electrochemistry, much more. Mm -hmm. But still, I want really enough heat. So you need so, to have more zeolite too, right? More zeolite, a better way of loading. Yeah because I should measure the amount, and also I would like to measure neutron. Mm -hmm. I would like to measure helium-4. But this money, my hope is this, that we can get from private, not tons of money, some money, that solves some of this problem. In chemistry, is easier. Physics, a little bit harder. In physics, Mm -hmm. You know, you need a lot of money and a yeah. lot of, you know, chemistry, <laughs> look at how much you like, you know. And so I yeah. feel that this, chemistry. <laughs> you know, that can go, I'm telling you.